U.S. President Joe Biden appears to be more confused than ever, yesterday referring to Cambodia, which is hosting an international summit led by Southeast Asian leaders, as Colombia. Take a listen. And now uh, that we are back together here in Cambodia, I look forward to building uh, even stronger progress than we've already made. And I want to thank the Prime Minister of Co for Colombia's leadership and the ASEAN, his ASEAN chair. There you go. Uh, Cambodia, Colombia. You say tomato, I say tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. And here he is in eloquent form addressing COP27 earlier this week. In fact, the International Energy Agency recently concluded that our significant climate investment will, quote, help turbocharge the, emer the, the, uh, the excuse me, tur turbocharge the emerging global clean energy, clean energy economy. Yeah, I want to turbocharge that sentence. This is the guy, don't forget, with the nuclear codes. Luckily, he'll probably forget them. Notwithstanding his daily howlers, which are too numerous to squeeze into a two-hour show, he now thinks he's in charge of UK-EU negotiations over the Northern Ireland Protocol by demanding a deal by next April. UK government sources said that Mr Biden's intervention in the process was unsurprising given his Irish heritage and concern about the longevity of the Good Friday Agreement. However, they added that a deal would be struck only if the EU was willing to make further concessions on the involvement of the European Court of Justice in the policing of the protocol. Two rights. But the US Democratic Party have a history of siding with the EU over UK national interests. Most notably when Barack Obama, the then president, said that Britain would be, quote, at the back of the queue for a US trade deal if we dared to restore sovereignty to this country and exit the bloc. Well, this blockhead Biden and his pals in Washington think they can browbeat the UK into accepting another fudge when it comes to the Northern Ireland Protocol, which places a border down the Irish Sea. We should never have accepted it in the first place. But it was the mechanism that ended the Brexit deadlock. And it's my view that the ever pragmatic Boris Johnson most likely signed it off, knowing full well it wasn't fit for purpose and would have to be revisited further down the line. And it's clearly not fit for purpose. First of all, the principle that a political monolith like the European Union should dictate the national boundaries of another country is an intervention with historic precedent that doesn't exist. It's an outrage for a non-British outfit to divide up our country. Plus, the border checks are needlessly overzealous for the passage of goods between two islands that have seen frictionless trade for decades. The decision to needlessly over-police this border is nothing to do with protecting the single market. It's punishment for Brexit. If it's not resolved, given the impact the protocol's having on Northern Ireland politics, the economy in the region, and given its increasing tensions within the unionist community, the EU will be responsible for effectively restarting the troubles and they will have blood on their hands. Yes, we need a solution. And it seems Rishi Sunak will build on work already started by Liz Truss to end the deadlock so the good people of Northern Ireland can once again have a functioning government that the, uh, also that we hope that the smooth flow of goods can resume and that Brexit can be properly delivered across both of our islands. We're told a deal is in the offing. And if so, it will be in spite of, not thanks to the needless lecturing from Joe Biden, a man who needs an hourly reminder that he's still actually president. Can you imagine a British politician dictating to the Americans like that? It would never happen. With crime in the US out of control, foreign policy in tatters, and an economy on the brink, Joe Biden is having trouble running his own country, which is why he should give up trying to run ours.